The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this distance learning session. I am your geography teacher, Onka George Vela. Uh, we are going to present lesson 10 today. And so the lesson will be centered on pressure systems. That is our lesson for today. Now, before we begin with the lesson, let us start by correcting the assignment. The assignment was to briefly describe how pressure influences the global distribution of precipitation. That was the assignment. So let us now look at the correction of that assignment. Now, briefly describe how pressure influences global distribution of precipitation. Now, generally, we know that places that are situated or located at low pressure zones record high amounts of rainfall due to uplift of air. Now, this is because as the warm, moist air is ascending, it reaches the dew point, you know, and when it reaches the dew point, condensation occurs, and so rain starts falling in these areas. So most of these areas that are situated, you know, at a, at a, at a low pressure belt are the areas that usually experience, you know, this kind of rainfall. Then we also have places at high pressure zones, they tend to record low amounts of rainfall due to subsidence. So in the course of our lessons, we are going to see the details on how the process takes place and how, and how the rain begins and then we, we are going to understand better. The overview of our lesson. So the lesson will be comprised of previous knowledge, learning objectives, situation in real life, learning activities, summary of the lesson, then exercises and assignment. So that's going to be uh, our lesson. Previous knowledge. You, before this lesson, you already have uh, knowledge on the influence of pressure birds and distribution of temperature. How, you know, pressure birds influence temperature distribution and precipitation in general. You already have knowledge on that. And so this previous knowledge is going to help us to better understand the lesson. Situation in real life. Let us look at the situation in real life. Now, yesterday, when you left school, on your way back home, there was a serious, there was serious rainfall that was characterized by thunder and lightning that disturbed you from arriving home in time. When you finally arrived home late in the night, your mother was so disturbed and wanted to know what causes, it, what causes this kind of bad weather conditions. Now, the question now is for you to explain to your mother the cause of these thunderstorms and lightning. Explain to your mother the cause of these thunderstorms and lightning. So in the course of this lesson, we are going to acquire the necessary knowledge that is going to help us to explain, that we can better explain, or you can better explain to your mother the cause of these thunderstorms and lightning. 
Now, the objective of our lesson was to define pressure systems, describe the tricycular, tri the, the tricellular model of atmospheric circulation. That's tricellular model of atmospheric circulation, and to illustrate the circulation on the Hadley cell. So we are going to see that in the course of our lesson. Now, learning activities. So this, this lesson is going to, center, to be centered on the following activities. We have one, the meaning of a tricellular model of atmospheric circulation. And then we are also going to look at uh, some illustrations that are going to help us to better understand the tricellular model of atmospheric circulation. Now, <clears throat> we are going to start by looking at the pressure system. Now, to do that, we first, we first of all have to understand what atmospheric pressure is. So, what is atmospheric pressure? It is simply the weight of the air or the weight exerted by a column of air on the Earth's surface. That is atmospheric pressure. It is important to note that on the Earth's surface, there are some areas where the air rather descends and some areas where the air is ascending. Now, in these areas where the air is descending, it causes more pressure on the surface because there is more it's pressing on the surface and so brings about high pressure. But in areas where the air is ascending, it, also, it, it releases, it is light, and so instead ascends and brings about low pressure. So much so that on the Earth's surface, we have areas which we can call belts or zones of low pressure and zones of high pressure. So we are going to see that. Now, an area will experience high pressure if the air is sinking, as we have already said, but low pressure if the air is rising. Then the Earth's surface is also made up of different zones, as we have already seen, with zones where the air is rising, that is low pressure zones, and zones where the air is descending, that is high pressure zones. Now, we are going to now look at pressure belts. What is a pressure belt? What we have seen informally is just what pressure is and how it behaves. So what is a pressure belt now? A pressure belt is simply an area of similar atmospheric pressure which is different from that of other areas. There are two main pressure belts in the world. We have low pressure areas, we, that we call them cyclones. They are found both in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. We also have high pressure areas, anticyclones, in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. Now, low pressure belts, cyclones. So, what are low pressure belts? Low pressure belts are usually located around the equatorial zones. They are also called the doldrums. These are low pressure belts, or you call it the equatorial low pressure belt, located between latitude zero degree to five degrees north and south of the equator. That is the expanse. Then, in these areas, we have winds tend to converge. Winds are converging because winds usually blow, generally, from high pressure zones into low pressure zones. So within the equatorial regions, we have you know, the northeast trade winds that are blowing from the subtropical high pressure belts into these low pressure belts. So they converge. And so where they are converging, it is known as intertropical convergence zone. And this causes low pressure belts, as we are going to see later on. <clears throat> so we have the second, the second uh, belt here, which is the temperate sub the temperate subpolar low pressure belt. Now it is located between latitude, uh, it's located at the mid latitude, that is between latitude 55 degrees to uh, 65 degrees north and south of the equator. In these areas, we have the westerlies that tend to blow into this region too. So we have said low pressure belts, winds is the blow from high pressure belts into this area. 
So the, uh, the winds that are blowing from here into this area, we have the westerlies and the polar easterlies that converge in this area. Now we have the polar pressure belt. The polar pressure belt, where is it located? It's between latitude 80 degrees to 90 degrees north and south of the equator. Now in this region, the, 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 we have a low pressure belt here, or low temperature, low temperature, sorry, that brings about this high pressure belt. It's because of the low temperatures that are existing there, making the air to become so cold, and when it's cold, it becomes heavier and sinks. So it brings about this, the existence of these low pressure belts here. Now on this figure here, we can see the distribution of the different uh, pressure belts here. We start with this one around the equator here. This is the equatorial low pressure belt, which can be also be called the doldrums. Now, it's usually at a, between latitude 5 degrees north and south of the equator. That's from the equator, south degrees north, uh, 5 degrees south and 5 degrees north of the equator. Then next, we have the subtropical high pressure zones, or you call it the horse latitude, usually situated between latitude 35 to 45 degrees. Um, between the latitude 35 to about 45 north and south of the equator here, degrees. Then after that, you have another one. This is the subpolar low pressure belts in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. So these are the different pressure belts that exist. It is important to note that winds always blow from high pressure belts into low pressure belt. Around the equator here, we have the equatorial low pressure belt here. Since it's a low pressure belt, winds tend to blow from uh, the subtropical high pressure belt into these pressure belts here. And these winds are known as the tropical easterlies, or you call them the northeast trade winds. Now, this is followed by this other pressure belt, so this another high pressure belt here, where winds blow now from the sub tropical high pressure belts into these polar low pressure belts here. Now, those that blow from the subpolar high pressure belts to the polar low pressure belts are known as the westerlies or the westerly winds. They blow from here and from the polar regions into this region. So from the polar, the polar easterlies equally blow into this region. So that is how winds tend to blow from one pressure belt to the next. This is going to help us to understand uh, the next aspect of the lesson. So we have pressure systems. Now, we have differences in atmospheric pressure where winds tend to flow from high pressure belts into low pressure belts in the globe. This forms you know, the global pattern of circulation that can be described as the model of circulation pattern. This can be described as um, the model of circulation pattern. So we are going to see that. So we have <coughs> tricellular model of atmospheric circulation. Now, what is it about? What is the tricellular model of atmospheric circulation? This is a model that simply describes the general circulation of the atmosphere, how winds circulate in the atmosphere. And uh, it is so called because it brings about you know, three patterns of circulation. That's why it is called the tricellular model of atmospheric circulation. Cellular because the circulation is usually you know, in form of, it, it produces cells, which we are going to see in, uh, so, now these are the major three uh, tricellular patterns. We have the Hadley cell, we have the feral cell, and the polar cell, which are located in different regions on the Earth's surface, as we are going to see later on. So let us look at the Hadley cell. Where is it found? It is found at the equator where we have warm air that rises 
forming an area of low pressure. So this area of low pressure, when the warm air rises, what does it do when it reaches you know, the, 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 the higher atmosphere? It moves poleward. As it is moving poleward, it cools. When it cools, it becomes heavier and sinks. And so when it is sinking, it forms a high pressure belt. When it's sinking, it forms a high pressure belt. Then the next one, from here now, as it descends now on the surface, it now moves again towards the equator to replace the air that is rising. So that is how the heart disease functions. So the, the, the warm air rises, when it reaches the atmosphere, it moves forwards as it is moving, it cools down. As it cools down, it descends. When it descends, it now moves on the surface again horizontally towards the equator, thereby replacing the air that is rising and the process continues again. Then the ferrous cell. Now this is a cell which is formed when cold, dense air from the polar high pressure belts are mixed with the dry air, which has which has originated from the subtropical high pressure belts at temperate low pressure belts. So the polar cell. This one is the one which is formed when cold, dense air sinks at the poles. That is polar high pressure belts and then moves towards the mid-latitude. Now, emphasis is laid here but on, you know, on the Hadley cell because it's the one that directly, you know, affects us within the tropics. That is why, you know, emphasis is going to be laid but on this one. So, in, on the figure here, we now see exactly uh, the model of circulation of this tricellular uh, circulation. So we see here, let us start with the Hadley cell. So we see from the equator here, we realize that warm, moist air rises. As it is rising, it reaches at about 30 kilometers from between 50 to, to 30, 15 to 30 kilometers here. It now moves horizontally forwards. As it is moving, it cools. When it cools, it sinks. As it is descending now, it warms up. When it reaches around the surface, it now moves horizontally back to the equator and the process continues. So this forms what is called the Hadley cell. Now here now, we have the ferrous cell. This is another second one, the ferrous cell here, where winds are also descending here. When they descend, they move to, towards the poles on the surface. As they are moving, as they are descending, they warm up. So when it reaches here, it moves now and ascends again. When it ascends, it cools up and is moving towards the equator, where it cools up and descends again. This forms the feral cell. Now, the next one is the polar cell. In this one, we realize that cold air here moves from the polar high pressure belts as it is moving into the subpolar low pressure belt and it reaches here now what happens is that it is warmed up and so when it is warmed it rises it expands when it expands and rises it moves again back towards the poles and as it is moving it cools up and descends so this now forms you know seals or circular movements which are known as seals of different names so as I earlier said, uh, emphasis is going to be laid but on the Hadley cell here, as we are going to see, you know, because it brings a lot of, you know, weather from the, uh, you know, different weather conditions, atmospheric instability that affects us. And this now is where we are going to have the knowledge where we can answer the question at the beginning that and when you arrived home late, your mother was so worried and wanted to know you know, the cause of, you know, this kind of bad weather condition. So what is happening? So we are going to see that later on. And then we see going to see the weather conditions that are associated to this type of, uh, this type, this, this had the sales. That is, these atmospheric motions or circulations. Now, we have the different Hadley cells here explained in detail. So we have Hadley cells and weather conditions within the tropics. 
So the first one, what are the different weather conditions? As we have said, we have said, you know, hardly sails around the tropics or areas that are found near the equator. They tend to have, you know, different weather conditions. And what are the weather conditions here on areas that are found around the tropics here? We have very stormy weather around the equator, thick cumulonimbus clouds, general dull weather, very heavy rainfall, sometimes associated with lightning and thunder. So what is causing this? Let us get back to uh, this figure here to see exactly what brings about this bad weather. We had earlier said around the equator here, these are areas that receive a lot of heat, that is insulation. Because of this insulation, you know, the atmosphere is heated, the surface is heated, and then warm, moist air rises. As it is rising now, when it reaches the dew point here, condensation occurs, and so when that condensation occurs, heavy rain starts falling because the air now expands around here, so heavy rain starts falling. So when it is falling now, it releases, when condensation occurs, it releases now that air that was rising, the air that was rising will become cold. And when it is cold, it tends to be descending. So when it is descending now, it brings about atmospheric instability. And that is what causes sometimes thunder and lightning. So this is what actually takes place around these areas here. So we are also going to see areas which are found around latitude 30 degrees. So these areas, what is the weather conditions here? Still around the Hadley cell. What are the weather conditions around areas that are found here? These are generally areas where winds are descending, areas that are found at high pressure belts, where cold air is instead descending. So when this happens, what are the weather associated weather conditions? We have relatively clear skies. Why are the skies here clear? Because you know, the air or the wind is instead descending, and so there is no evaporation for uh, clouds to be formed. So that is why the skies are very clear here. Then we also have high sunshine or insulation during the day. Why is high insulation during the day? The skies are already clear. So the sun's rays pass straight onto the Earth's surface, thereby causing high insulation. We also have rapid radiational loss at night. Why? Still because the skies are very clear. So at night now when the sun is no more shining, what happens is that the surfaces, they quickly lose their heat to the atmosphere. Then we also have generally calm weather. Generally calm weather because, you know, the winds are just descending when they have not reached the dew point here at this level here. And that's why the atmosphere is very calm. There is no thunder, there is no lightning. Then we have low humidities, low humidity because the surface, when the dry air descends, it instead causes dry conditions, and so there is no water on the surface to evaporate. Then we also have increased atmospheric pressure, increase because the winds are descending and causing more pressure on uh, the surface. So that is how this brings about different weather conditions. So just by studying this, aspects. We can be able to predict weather. We can be able to explain why some places tend to experience, you know, very heavy rainfall with thunderstorms and lightning and why in some areas there is no rainfall. So we can go back now to, you know, our situation in real life, which was asking us to explain to your mother the reasons for this bad weather condition. So you can now explain by using the knowledge we have acquired here, by saying that the bad weather condition is because, you know, we are situated within uh, the, the, around the equator, and this is a low pressure belt, whereby we have a lot of, you know, what air is becoming warm and is expanding, and, and since it is so moist, when it reaches the dew point, you know, uh, condensation occurs. When this condensation occurs, rain starts falling. And so these winds, that or the air that is released now becomes cold and is descending. So when it is descending, it brings about thunder and lightning. So that is what you could explain to your mother in order for her to understand what is causing 
these uh, bad weather conditions. So we are now going to summarize our lesson for today. So our lesson was centered generally on you know, pressure systems. So on, under that topic, pressure systems, we saw pressure bursts. And so we said, we have high pressure bursts and low pressure bursts. Now the equatorial low pressure bursts, we also have, you know, after the equatorial low pressure bursts, as we're moving forward, we have the subtropical high pressure bursts. From there, as we are also moving, we now have the subpolar low pressure bursts, and finally, the polar high pressure bursts. These are the different pressure bursts. And we said, note should be taken of the fact that winds are always blowing from high pressure bursts into low pressure bursts, and they bring a lot of, you know, a lot of consequences. And this causes, you know, uh, the movement of winds and brings about what is called tricellular uh, circulation. Then we also illustrated this by using, you know, uh, diagrams to show how it circulates. Then emphasis was laid on hardy cells and how this influences weather conditions within the tropical region. So that was uh, what we have seen in our lesson. Then exercise. Study the diagram below, which shows the pressure bursts of the world and the associated weather conditions and answer the questions that follow. So that is the exercise we are going to see. So we have this diagram. So we can see here that these are the different pressure bursts. This is the, this is the earth. And so we have the different pressure bursts and this is the atmosphere that surrounds uh, the earth. So around the different pressure bursts here, the question was that we should first of all identify the pressure bursts. So which pressure burst is this? That was the question. So we are going to go now and see the answer. We have this pressure burst here. This is another pressure burst here. And up there, there's another pressure burst. Now we also have cells here. So which cells are these? And so what are the different weather conditions that are taking place here? Are the zones where we either have convergence or divergence? What are the different conditions? So that is a diagram. So we are now going to see the answer to that. Identify and state weather conditions associated with, uh, with pressure bursts. This, that was, that is, please, this is a mistake here. This is supposed to be the questions that follow the diagram. So we have identified and state weather conditions associated with pressure bursts, and then relate the weather of the northern and southern parts of Cameroon to different pressure bursts. That is the question which we are now going to see the correction. So for the correction, we have weather conditions in areas near the equatorial pressure bursts. So near the equatorial pressure bursts, what are the different weather conditions? The conditions are very stormy weather. We have thick, dense, cumulonimbus clouds. We have general dull weather. We have very heavy rainfall, sometimes associated with thunder and lightning. So around the regions or the countries that are found around the equator, this is what they, uh, they, they, they experience, including Cameroon. You know, Cameroon is found within uh, the tropics near the equator, and this explains why we usually have, you know, heavy rainfall characterized by thunder and lightning, sometimes generally dull weather. We also have areas that are situated, you know, around the subtropical high pressure bursts. We have this, those areas, around those areas, what are the weather conditions there? We have relative clear skies. We have high sunshine or insulation during the day. We have rapid radiational loss at night, general calm weather, low humidities, increase in atmospheric pressure. So these are some of the... Uh, then we have <coughs> the next question, the question two, was to relate the weather conditions to the northern and southern part, the northern part and southern part of Cameroon to pressure bursts. 
So we said generally, weather conditions in the southern part of Cameroon are related to those of the equatorial low pressure belt as described above. And this is because the southern part of Cameroon is located in, within the doldrums or within uh, this, this, the, the equatorial low pressure belt. Then weather conditions in the northern part of Cameroon are related to those of equatorial low pressure belt as described above. And the, this is because the northern part of Cameroon is located near the horse latitude, that is the tropical sub-pressure belt. We said this is where you know, winds are descending. So when we look at this, we can now understand why generally some parts of northern Cameroon are always very dry and experience very low rainfall. This is because these areas are located uh, near uh, the high subtropical high pressure belt. The assignment. Now, find out the different types of winds and their subtypes. That's going to be our assignment for the next uh, lesson. Now, to understand it very well and to better do the assignment, you can read these documents. Now, our next lesson shall be on the planetary winds. That is our next lesson. So, see you in the next class. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.